It's Triple L Breakfast. I have some exciting news. What news? You are fake news. Well, that's good news. Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Lies. Overnight news. Or the house out at Smithfield Plains where the Snowtown murders were uh, happening. They uh, People lived in there. The bodies were getting chopped up in there. They reversed oh. in acid in there. They took them out in the uh, land cruises, apparently. Anyway, Mark Hayden, uh, he was... Uh, in, he was the, the boss of that house. That house has been sitting idle for 25 years. Can you believe it? Uh, it doesn't make any it. sense. I don't think anyone would want so to no, go yeah, here. Nothing's ever he happened clearly to couldn't be in a position to own it, could he? Like, isn't it a housing trust house? Uh, Why wouldn't you be cleaning it up and or bowling it over, doing something with it over a 25-year period? Mm. Mm, that's a good question. It's a long time. But what would housing you do with cross, it? What would you do with it? Bowl it over and build two new ones on it or... Still be spooky though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, even there's mur- still the land where it all murders in it all the time. If you remember, they dug up the backyards there, um, so it would, <laughs> Make I it know a they park they or talk do about something. they talk about Snowtown, but the backyard there was dug up. So have you did you see the footage of it last night? There's car bodies. It's overgrown. Imagine yeah. living next door to it. Mm. Like it's, Ooh, it do something with yeah. it, please. Well, even local council or authorities should be doing something. Yeah. It is something it's that housing is... housing trust, bowl it over and clean it up at least. Yeah. When you have those houses where really horrible things happen, it's like, what do you do with the place? Where Do, do people want to live there ever again? Yeah, people move on. I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't want to. Um, a man's passed away drowned yesterday at um, Aldinga Beach. So just absolutely tragic. Just before 3 p.m., he was a 79-year-old bloke from Murray Bridge. They, they couldn't revive him. They did their best. Uh, it just goes to show, you know... It, it can still happen to people who know how to swim. and He's pretty old, wasn't he? Yeah, and it was 80 years old, 79 years old. Yeah. So uh, sometimes rips can get you or cramps or I, I don't know exactly what happened, but you've, you've got to look out for people and make sure you're following all the, you know, staying in the flags and stuff like that. But even still, you know, tragedies can happen. Yeah, dangerous place, the old beach at times. Eh? Mm. Gen Zers and millennials are starting to develop uh, hunchbacks uh, because of the amount of time <laughs> oh, they no. spend on their phones oh, and on no. computers at the moment. I'm kidding? No, this is true. They've uh, um, they've done X rays on them, and you know before they're thirty five, they're already developing uh, old age looking bodies. And some of them, in fact, the real bad ones, are getting spurs on the base of their spines. Spurs, yes. No. And spurs can be caused, as you Ooh. know, you've probably had them in your knees you and get ankles. them on your heels. Yeah, you can get them on your spine because of the stress that you put on from your muscles and ligaments and tendons from your forward shaped head like that. And you want to when you push your head forward and you feel your muscles on your back tighten up. Yeah, that's what's causing it. Mm. Mm. Uh, Robert Irwin. Son of Steve. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah. Did you see that? Crikey, he indeed. He's a superstar. He's on Inge. Um, Who? Which, What's Inge? Hinge is a um, dating app. Oh, Hinge. Yeah. Isn't he? He's on a dating getting app. married? Uh, no. They no. broke up. They broke, they up, broke up about up. two weeks ago. It's only yeah. recent. Yeah, so he's back on Hinge. That's really normal. People break up and then they end up on, on Hinge. That's pretty standard. But somebody's put up um, screenshots of his profile just saying, how good is it? So I guess it's a bit of a flex being Steve Irwin's son and being, you know, boss of Australia Zoo. But Hinge, basically what it does is it gives you prompts and then you've got to finish the sentence so that your profile is complete. So it'll ask you things like, it'll say, I know the best spot in town for, and then asks you to fill in the rest. So people oh, right. sort of thing. He says, I know the best spot in town for relocating endangered species. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Together we could run Australia Zoo. <laughs> mm. my, my hobbies are revving my bike, fishing, saving animals, and getting dirty for Mother Earth. <laughs> is this stuff that people have filled in? Is that what you're saying? It's him. He's filled this He's in. He's filled it in. It's like this is his profile. So unusual skills. I can rest, rec- wrestle can a crocodile with Dits's my bed. Profile on hinge? What no. would Ditz's be? Let's fill it in for oh. later. Unusual skills can make two bottles of Sav Blanc disappear in oh, yeah. 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I think he's going to be just, girls love him. He's going to be fine. He needs to be unhinged. Yeah. He? He's the- <laughs> <laughs> it's rude. It's a loss. Triple M. So I had one of those moments the other day when I realised... I'm becoming my mother. <laughs> oh, what <laughs> did I you think do? it happens to the best of us. But um, I was in traffic and my mum, 
she's a very um she's a very reactive person in the car in that it doesn't take much to get a slightly Road ragey, I think. That's the sort of... <laughs> road thought. rage. Slightly road rage. Just a little bit road rage. She would never do anything about it, but she's got some stern words for people. Right. And when we were in the car with her when we were kids, we used to always go, oh, mum, just relax. Just relax, calm down. Because whenever we were in traffic and anyone beeped anywhere, I mean, they could have been, it could have been off in the distance, she would immediately assume it was about her and she would say, so there'd be a distant beep and she'd go... She's Canadian, my mum. Who are you beeping at, Turkey? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Strong language. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, Turkey was a big one. <laughs> yeah. um, and we go, Mum, stop it. They're not even beeping at you. It's not even about you. She go, I, he, I think it was the guy behind me. He's beeping. He's tooting. <laughs> anyway. Was so, she aware of, like, or did she just think it was always her? I, I don't know. I think when you're in the car and you hear a big beep, it, it's, al- it's almost natural to assume, yeah. what, is, what is it about? Yeah. What did I do? Anyway, we were sitting there just chastising her. The other day I was in traffic and somebody beeped near me and I just went, who are you beeping at? <laughs> I, it's red. I can't go yet. And then I went, oh, he <laughs> was beeping at someone else. It had nothing to do with me. And I went, oh, my God, I'm becoming Kath. And it's not just that. It's a lot of things, you know. It's the fact <laughs> It's the fact that I'm currently drafting an email to the local council about the leaves in my oh, front yard. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just becoming an old person. <laughs> like, it's just happening it to me. Yeah. Ditch, you would have felt it. Uh, a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny? As you are saying things, you think, oh, boy, can this like, yeah. reverse and just come back into my mouth there as yeah. I'm saying this to my kids? <laughs> or, there's no, no doubt about that. We've yeah. all had those I've, moments. I've just written down a few things, I'll say. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, like Sophie's driving now. She's seventeen. Be careful, don't speed. Oh. I, I just say that all the time. Yeah. Every time I see her go out, be careful, don't speed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to the kids, you know, use your manners, be respectful. Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. They're just exact lines that you, if you go back that my old man would have said to me a thousand times yeah. every time I left Waker to drive to Adelaide. Don't speed. You don't have to be in a rush. <laughs> yeah, he'd do 160. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think even just wandering around the house now, turning off lights and making sure the air conditioner's not on high. And sort oh, of, yeah. Oh, that, who left that window open? And <laughs> like, there's bloody flies getting in here. <laughs> yeah. And I just go, oh, my God, I've become them. I've become them. When did you realise you're becoming just like your parents? I know. You know, another thing I realise I do is that I explain recipes in their full thing to people. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go oh, what, all you have to do is chop up a bit of onion, chop up a bit of garlic, uh. put it in the pan, then you turn the oven on and the person just, gla- their eyes glaze over. Yeah. But I can't stop. I I'm, can't ask I might have had thing. to. I just thought during the break, I might have, when I was like sort of turning into my old man, like when I was a kid, I had, I had a game of junior footy stopped once in the parklands because... My father sort of had got asked to leave, if you know what I mean. That's the short version of the story. Right. <laughs> and then I just thought it kind of might have happened to me as well. <laughs> yeah, well it, did. it, it, it did, definitely didn't happen just once. <laughs> well, you've told me several times. Yeah, you give, you've got to give a bit of advice Why, here and there, you don't didn't, you? Why, you didn't stop a nah, junior well, anyway, footy game. Which anyway. son? Nah. I was, Both. <laughs> all of them. Oh, no. And everyone else's. Oh, Let's no. go to Royal Park. G'day, Cassidy. You're the first Cassidy we've ever had on Triple M. Congratulations. Really? Yeah. 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 Do you meet many Cassidys? No, I've no. met them that one before. No. Yeah. Great name. Very Beautiful lucky. name, yeah. Where did it come from? <laughs> Why did your parents call you Cassidy? Um, my understanding is it's an Irish fairy tale, but my mum is Sri Lankan and my dad is German, so I have no idea. How <laughs> Gee, there's the United Nations right there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. In one house. <laughs> anyway, tell us an about Irish when you name from Sri Lankan and a yeah, German. Yeah, I love it. So I watched Shark Tank and they have the Scrub Daddy. I bought it from Woolies when it was on special and now I can't stop telling my friends about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, telling people about right. cleaning products, that's a huge one. Oh, you've got to get it. The stains just disappear. Yeah, yeah thanks, Cassidy. That's great. We're talking, when did you know you were turning into your parents? I've just become my parents into one sort of morphed <laughs> mum and dad being. It's it's awful. I mean, it's great. I'm really, I, I love them, but... It's not necessarily the good bits. It's the bit just where doesn't you, need to happen yet. Yeah, it? it's the bit where you're complaining about flies getting in the house and you start recommending dish detergents to people yeah. and stuff like that. All right, who have we got on the line? We there? got Glenn from Newton. G'day, Glenn. When did you realise you were turning into your parents? 
morning. Oh, a long time ago, I realised I was becoming my dad because when my kids were living at home, they've got their own houses now, but uh, when they were living at home, well, you kids close the bloody door when the air conditioning's on. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> I've heard that one a few yeah. times for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do yeah. not mess with dad's thermostat. Yeah. 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 Let's go to Coromandel East. G'day, Shelley. When did you realise you were turning the appearance? Oh, God. When I started saying, I don't care who started it, I finished it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good one, isn't it? That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. a classic How strong one. Fighting, fighting kids. Yeah, 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 I love that. Let's go uh, to Tananda. G'day, Darren. When did you realise you were turning into your parents? Yeah, g'day, morning. How are we all going? Yeah, good, good. The uh, My personal favourite is uh, I'm not your personal butler. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> yes. And the other one was always, this isn't a bloody hotel, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, or a taxi service. Yeah, yeah. If you <laughs> lived right. up in the hills, <laughs> I'm right. not a taxi. <laughs> well, you moved us up here and then we made friends down there, so come on. All right, beep, Neil. Beep. Neil at Wosley's, what was yours? When everything in the house gets labelled, if you stand still too long, you get labelled yourself oh. as well. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. the most? What's the weirdest thing you've put a label on? I've actually copied my mum doing frying pans. <laughs> <laughs> frying pans? <laughs> Come on, Neil. What do you mean you've called it a frying pan or you've said what it's best for using? It's what it's best for. My, my, we discovered recently my mum had 13 frying pans. <laughs> oh, and, my God. Uh, and everyone had a label. There was eggs and pancakes and bacon. Oh. You, you name it, it had a label. I reckon yeah. that's 11 too many, Neil. <laughs> Let's go to Golden Grove, Adrian. Uh, when did you realise you were turning into your parents? Good morning, Rude. It's and Loss. How are we? Yeah, yeah very good. Um, my um, mum used to recycle the Christmas paper, and we always got told you can't rip it and stuff, yep. so yep. she could recycle for the next year. And, um, yeah, I've started becoming that myself. And oh, uh, no. But, hey, look, I don't recycle the labels, though. Okay. Yeah. I can see the Christmas paper, but the best fun for the kid is ripping it rip apart. Yeah. Rip it as hard as oh, you can. Oh, those were great. It's Triple L Breakfast. My man, Bobby Catter. I love Bobby Catter, the politician from <laughs> Queensland. Who, the mad catter. Yeah, he's a bit mad. <laughs> Where's the cowboy hat? That's and good dips. He likes to have a gear change. He goes from second to fourth or fourth back to second. He yeah. misses a gear yeah. in the middle of his chats. Here's one of the old favourites we've played a hundred times. I mean, let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. You know, but I ain't spending any time on it because <laughs> in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North That's Queensland. Right. That's the gear change we're talking about. <laughs> Listen to him yesterday having a blue with another politician, uh, Ross Cadell. And then he starts talking about spuds. Instead of playing politics. I've got a problem with the stuntman here. Uh, mate, you know, I was a stuntman a few years ago. I asked this bloke why he left. He said, because every one of the principals... Because he thought he knew better than electric. You let me... He thought he knew better than electric. Don't speak over me again. Mate. I'm warning you. Don't speak over me. He thought he knew better than electric. You listen to this? You listen to this? Shut up. Money to don't keep up. interrupting me. Don't to keep up. interrupting me. Right. But just please, that's a photograph today of the price of potatoes <laughs> in Woolworths. Three dollars ninety. The price paid to farmers today ranges between forty and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> Was he fighting about potatoes with the man? Know. Well, they were there to say how Coles and Woolies are ripping off growers. Yeah. But the bloke wouldn't shut up and he yeah. kept wanting to get his word across and, you know. Uh, don't interrupt Bob. Bob. Hey, Bob's the boss. <laughs> Bob you know, the just like boss. Tommy Jonas was the boss last year at Port Adelaide. Yeah, but he'll up be next. joining us in just a moment. It's rude. It's a loss. Triple M. 104.7 Triple M. Stay cool with an Auto Masters aircon service. Call 1300 Auto Masters. Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Your rumor file's been on the money a few times. Oh, hey. Hey. The Premier says. Every morning at 7:40 a.m., hear what's happening in Adelaide first. Mm. The rumor mill. All right, got something for you to both think about this morning. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, Last year, the AFL, I wasn't aware of this, the AFL last year banned 16 fans, spectators, for life. Lifetime bans to 16 different spectators around the country for racial slurs. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot. Okay. So instant lifetime ban. Mm -hmm. Sports Integrity Australia has contacted the AFL and the NRL this week 
and are saying they want the same to apply for players on the ground. Ooh. Now, I don't, know if you've, I don't know if you've followed this, but uh, this week in the world of NRL, there's been a player suspended for eight weeks for a racial slur. Yeah. It happened in Vegas. Uh, on the ground it was during a game. Mm-hmm. He copped eight weeks and certain identities within NRL have come out and said, not enough, we want more. Uh, and yeah, Sports Integrity Australia are talking to both codes right now and are suggesting the same laws should apply on field as they do in the grandstands. Do all laws that apply on field apply in the grandstands and vice versa? Is no, it the don't. same? No, they don't. No? None of them. No. no. So anyway, that's you, uh, what's wow. being talked that about this week. That would not happen. That could not happen. Mm. Imagine, for instance, Tex. There's plenty of people who would be mm. lifetime banned. Mm. Oh, the, the whole, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's strange. That's big, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, way over the top. They won't listen to that. They can't listen to that. Mm. All right. So therefore, should the spectators have been banned for life? I don't think so. No. No, not necessarily. No. I don't know what they said or what they did in individual cases. I'm mm. not condoning racism one little bit, but geez, no. not, a, big you don't, penalties, even, you don't they? even get lifetime bans for murder. Yeah, that's right. Mm. I don't know I mean, what the, they the, said. The yeah. bloody Snowtown murder is out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're right. You make good points. But anyway, that's Sports Integrity Australia. Yeah, well done. Mm. Uh, I've got a little one. Um, So Bon Jovi, they've been teasing new music. um, So this is actually going to drop on Friday. They've got a little hook here. No, that's not them. (laughs) That was their old stuff, wasn't it? I think that was a different band. Beautiful. New stuff, great. New stuff from Bon Jovi. And apparently... There could be a tour soon. So they've got something up on their website, which is like a countdown clock, mm. and which is what ACDC sort of had before they announced their tour. So there might be a massive tour from Bon Jovi coming. If you're a Bon Jovi fan, and I know there's heaps of them out there, keep your eyes peeled. All right. Mm. Nice one. Are you watching closely? On television. Please turn the television set on. On Triple M Breakfast with Rue, Dits and Loz. He says he's been watching TV. What are we watching? All right. There's what have you got, on the Dix? Text line. Uh, You put me onto something, Loz, last week. I've started The Tourist. Oh, great. Uh, I'm up to episode three. Love it. Uh, Jamie in, Dornan. Uh, Jamie Dornan, yeah. yeah. It's very good. Set, and a lot of it filmed in South Australia, which I'm enjoying. So cool. Where? I'm looking at town. I think it's, I reckon it's Quorn. Yeah. It's one Quorn. of the towns. Beautiful and, little town. A lot of, lot of outback stuff, but it's yeah. really good. Very myster- mysterious. They filmed some stuff in Adelaide at the Wheat Sheaf Hotel. Did a couple they? of pub scenes, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And a, a mate of mine, um, Brett. Like he's a comedian. We've had him in here before. He was he was one of the extras. Well, he wasn't an extra. He had a speaking partner. So lots of people. He, yeah. he was like, I was working I'm enjoying with it. Yeah. the guy from Fifty Shades of Grey. It was insane. Mm. Um, I'm watching a show. Well, I've actually just finished it. I binged it. I loved it. it was, it's called The Gentleman. Uh, guy Ritchie's directed it. It's sort of based on the premise of his film, The Gentleman, of the same name. Um, with it, Matthew McConaughey? Yep. Uh, but it's a bit different, so it's not it's same premise, but different characters and stuff. Still about growing weed. That's right on the properties of lords and dukes, and where the police didn't think they would be. It's got it's got all the stuff you want from a Guy Ritchie production. It's it's is it based of, on? It's obviously, no, I won't even say that. I don't think it's based on Couldn't real be. stuff because the cops would be onto it. But it's a it's kind of an interesting premise. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. You will receive a significant amount of money. In return, letting us carry out our activities. I didn't create this problem. I'm trying to help you deal with it. No one walks away. Well, yeah. I have to have a look at that. I did my usual channel flick on the weekend when I did all my jobs on Fox and come up with movie greats and Godfather 2 was on. Oh. I had to sit down and watch that one just to go with Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction and Dumb and Dumber and the other movies I've watched recently. There's a heap on the text line here. Tell Dits if he likes British shows to go to a website called worldproductions.com. Uh, and World you can have Productions. A look there. Netflix, right. Fool Me Once, Britbox. Uh, payback from Salisbury Man. Don't know what yep. that means. Yep. Uh, Dits would be all over Full Swing on yeah. Netflix. Golf. It's about the golf tour. Is it? Oh, I thought yeah. it might have been an adult zone. No, it's like a um, <laughs> swingers party. Yeah. Shiloh Freeling Watch Bosch. Bosch on Amazon Prime. I Googled it's brilliant. all of those words and yeah, nothing came up. So I don't know, <laughs> uh, I don't know right. whether someone had a... <laughs> Started watching Old Price is Right episodes on YouTube. <laughs> <What>? Classic. <laughs> Uh, show Wait, so it's trigger talking? point. It's explosive. On Mark stand. Rusciuto, come on down. Uh, Wait, do, hang on. I need more information from this. But are we talking Larry Emder or are we talking the American one? What are you doing? Well, that's the, uh, Larry. Um, Ian Turpy was before. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah. 
And wh- who Terps. was the woman? Who was the woman? She was... Adriana. Adriana. Oh, come on down. She's How hot. good. Triple M Breakfast with Rue Dits and Lies. When do I get paid? It's time for Joe's Joke. Which Rusciuto kid's telling jokes today? Is it Joe, Nick, Tom, Sophie, Rosie or Rocco? Spin the Rusciuto kid, kid wheel. wheel. Okay, good morning, kids. Who have we got there today? Tom and Rocco. Tom Yay. and Rocco. Hey. How are you, boys? Hey. Yeah. Hey, did you have the day off yesterday? Yeah. Why? Uh, uh, Teacher teach free day. Pupil free day, yeah. free day. Everyone's free. That's good. Did you play basketball last night, Tom? Yep. Did you win? Yep. Uh, how many points did you score? Six. Six. Well Six. done. goals he got. Wow. That's incredible. That's great. Nana right. was there watching. You were showing off. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, uh, now, Rocco, what grade are you in at school? Five. Five. You get much homework? Uh, not much. Not much? No. Yeah. Nah. Do you do it? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I was a bit like Fair that enough. too. Yeah. Hey, right. tell me about the footy tips. How did you boys go on the weekend? Uh, I didn't get one correct. Oh. You didn't even get one. I've one correct so far. Oh, yeah, right. Good on you, Tom. Hey, now, I know you'll get one easy this week because both of you will pick Port Adelaide, won't you? No. no. What do you mean? Oh. What do you mean, no? no? They'll beat West Coast. Oh, I'm still... Go for West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right. Yeah, right. All right. Good How many jokes place. have you got for us today? Uh, two jokes and one fun fact. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Oh, right. 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 I look forward to this. All right. Give us the first joke, please. Um, uh, why is it annoying to eat next to a basketball player? Why is it annoying to <laughs> eat next to a basketball why? player? Why? Why? Because they dribble all the time. Yeah, they dribble. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, very good. All right, what's Ew. the next joke? It's a fun fact. Oh, fun fact. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Did the Mars give me a fun call? Yeah. Did he know snails can sleep for three years? What can sleep for three years? Snails. 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 Can they can sleep for three years? Yeah. That's true. It's really slow metabolism. Oh. They can yeah. just... Mm. Bunker down. Good one, Tommy. Well oh. done. I Did love that. A bit of work that. on those. Thanks yeah. for that. No, I like it. That's very That's informative. Good, yeah. That's a what we learnt, isn't it? It is. Uh, Rock, what's your gag? Why do bees have sticky hair? <laughs> Why? <laughs> they use honeycombs. Oh. <laughs> good on you, boys. Good on right. you, boys. Well Have a good done. day at school. All right, kids in cars. They've been calling in. Let's first of all go to Cyril. Hello, Cyril. Hi. How, how old are you, mate? I'm nine. 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 And what school do you go to? I go to Scott Creek Primary. Where's, oh, where's that? Yeah, where's that near? That's near Sterling. Oh, oh up in the hills. Oh, beautiful. Okay, what do you like to do at school, Cyril? Um, I like um, I like to do riding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and, very good. Yeah. What's All the right. best part about living in the Adelaide Hills? Um. Do I live? don't live in the Adelaide Hills. I live down in Blackwood. Oh, okay. You just okay. go to school in the hills, do nice. you? Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good boy. Good okay, boy. now, All right. tell us your joke this morning, Cyril. Why couldn't the sunflower ride its bike? Cool. Why? Because it lost its pedals. Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. I suppose you wouldn't be able to. Good on you, Cyril. Yeah. Who you got there, Ruth? i got Jack on the line. G'day, Jack. Hi. Hi. How old are you, Jack? Four. 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 I'm kidding. You're, You're the little... equal youngest joke teller we've ever had on this segment. Yeah. When's your birthday, Jack? 27 May. <laughs> are you going to be five? <laughs> yeah. Oh, beauty. Do you... You... What, what school do you go to? I'm Sierra Primary. Yeah, yeah, okay. And what's your teacher's name? Miss Keys and Miss Lauren. You got two. Oh. <laughs> got two of them. Mm-hmm. How good is that? Wow. That All means right. if you get in the bad books with one, you can still have fun with the other <laughs> yeah. one. Who's your best friend at school, Jack? Uh, Benji. Yeah, ben, he's, he's a good boy. He's a ripper, isn't he? Yeah. How All right. Good. What's your joke this morning? Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? You're it. You're a poo. How dare you call me a <laughs> <laughs> Right. Good idea, oh. Jack. I sort of walked into that. Yes, yeah. we walked right into it. It's Triple L Breakfast. 
Oh, the Rush Hour boys need to work on their relationship. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> we've decided to lock them up, can you believe it? An Oz track <laughs> camper for 24 hours at the Marion Holiday Park. <laughs> There could be some domestic violence. There. I think there's. I don't know. So this is what's going to happen: no phones, no contact what? with the outside world, no phones. Serious team building exercises. Okay. They couldn't spell team. No, uh, lock in from tonight's show until tomorrow night's show. So it's a yeah. full twenty four hour experience. All right. <laughs> One of the three stooges is on the line. Bernie Vince, good morning. Hey, good on you guys. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy your freedom from now, Bernie. Enjoy breakfast this morning. Enjoy everything because it's about to end. Oh, no, we haven't been told anything either, Dit. So we're like, well, do we bring food? Do we bring spare clothes? And apparently we've got a uniform. Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, no. What's it look like? Oh, I'm not telling you that, Not something you'd wear. Put it that way. Yeah. (laughs) Have you got a mirror for Bluey? Um, Well, we get to take one item in. Each. So I'm thinking Bluey's might be a mirror. Yeah. yeah. Um, and some tweezers. I haven't confirmed my item at the moment. I'm thinking about just going in and just copping whatever we cop. So I'd take 24 something, mate. Four hours with jars. How, how's that going to go? Yeah, in a tight space, too, Root. Mm. So um, we've got to sleep together, mingle together. Like two hours is fine in the afternoon. Like I can handle that. Barely, but, yeah. Jeez, 24 hours. Like I think I, was, I think I was looking forward to it a lot until about now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real. So, now, have you been told about, what about the uh, toilet situation? Mm. Well, we got informed last night, and this was this is pretty late, that there's no toilet inside. So I was thinking, geez, all of a sudden I thought we're going to have to hold on, make sure I go before I get in there. Mm. But there is a toilet just outside the door because, right. well, we were, we were talking about going in there at one stage and, I was thinking, I'll block the toilet up mm. and then no one will be able to go just to stir everyone up. Yeah. And I think the kids, I uh, don't think uh. they were too happy with that. So now the uh, toilet's outside. But right. Hang uh, on. a lot of fun. Is that it's something good. you can do on command? Well, I'm not block sure. a toilet? I, I wasn't going to do that with, I was going to do it with something else. Oh, oh right. I was going to say, but, that's um, a bit of a just, gift. Is, <laughs> is the sugar daddy a snorer, uh, Bernie, or not, Jazz? Well, just looking at him, what are you doing? You'd have to yeah, be. He looks oh, like There's him. no way. Like a big bear. Yeah. Oh, I feel sorry for our neighbours next to us in the caravan. Well, this is right. Caravans don't hold the sound too well. So, yeah, um, yeah so, 24 hours. It's we, just starting to sink in now, actually. Uh, it would be interesting. See how detailed his game plan is for his, his footy club. You might have a bit of time to, you know, mm. get into the nitty gritties, plan A and B and C for you this year. That's what I should ask him. We're, we're mic'd up the whole time, so... No doubt our conversations will wane after about, about about an hour, I reckon. It'll be quality, and then there'll be 23 hours of just crap. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some of the things that are going to be happening. I've, I've had a chat to the people in charge, and let, let me just say it's going to make for great radio. It's going to be a fantastic <laughs> thing to watch and listen to, and may God have mercy on your souls. <laughs> no, no shower either, I think. Now, I was track no camper shower. at giving you the camper trail. I, I reckon this will have to be condemned afterwards. <laughs> no, I know. It could, yeah. it could be a write-off, this yeah, one, Burn. Yeah, going to be putting an evidence locker. Demo, but I don't know how much damage you can have in a demo. Yeah. Well, there'll be scratch marks near the door. You'll be trying to get out. You'll be one suffocating. Bed. One bed. One so bed? What? I'm, I'm led to believe one bed. Joking. So. They're going to need an exorcist to come oh, in afterwards no. and sort of sage the place. We may need security as well. Like, is there a mm. policeman going to be close? Because jars can blow up at any stage. He so. can. <laughs> He can. Uh, He's always on tired. the edge. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good on you, mate. Good, Good luck. luck. Good, Good luck. luck. Hey, for your adventure at Oz Track Campers Camden Park showroom now open. Celebrities. Got a bit of celebrity news for you. Influencers. Instagram, Triple M, Adelaide page, whatever that means. He's got his ear to the ground. Uh, yeah. It'll be downloaded, uploaded. What do you do? Uh, it's awesome. time for Chris Dittmar's OMG. 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 Oh, it's like speed dating this morning. I've got to do this in 90 seconds because we're way, way, way late, okay? So I've got to get seconds. through it. I've got to rip through it. Don't cut it short. Uh, I reckon the menu's not too good at the Oscars. Oh. Jamie Lee Curtis left and went to the In N Out Burger drive thru <laughs> and got burger and chips. Oh, How good, in Jamie. In her Lee. gown. Love that. In her from car. Jamie. You can imagine, that must happen in Hollywood a lot. Well, if you're working at the local Maccas or something, yeah. big name celebs must pull through all the time. She's been around a while. She's probably sick of the after. She won last year. So I'm she's also, had her moment, you know. Yeah. She's done. I'm also happy with the fact that there's a celebrity star, you know, a Hollywood starlet, mm. who's going through the drive thru yeah. instead of having alfalfa sprouts and. 
you know, be drinking agree. coconut water Jamie or something. Jamie Lee Curtis is married to Christopher Guest, who's in right. Spinal Tap, which is one of my favourite movies of okay. all time. Anyway, and, yeah. so she wins votes. Good She's on great. her for posting uh, it too. Yeah, she left the Oscars. Did and she said, upload it or download it? Did, did both. <laughs> okay. She couldn't decide. Now, she uploaded and re downloaded um, it. Sharon account. Stone's come out with a bit of a shocking story. I wasn't afraid of experimenting. I like men like that. Men who give me pleasure. Ooh, right, that was her in yeah. basic instinct. What a voice. Oh, that was so good. I remember weird. in um, one of our game shows we do, uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays, heaps good quiz, they said which one did. Which girl did Ditz famously um, kiss? Oh, famously kiss. It was Sharon Princess Sharon Stone, Stone and someone said Sharon Stone. Sharon and we went, Stone. oh, my God. You'd, been, you'd still <laughs> be in been. heaven if yeah. you did that. Oh. Anyway, I'm only got 90 seconds here. Stop interrupting. <laughs> hey, uh, she's come out with a story and uh, quite a shocking story. She's written a book and she said that um, back in the day, a producer, a very famous producer, mm-hmm. Robert Evans. Who Bob did Evans, yeah. Godfather and yep. other things. Um, yeah. Apparently, the, she was making the movie Sliver, which mm. ended up being a real good movie. Yeah. But it was struggling. And they could tell during production it wasn't going that well. So Robert Evans said to her, look, I need you to sleep with Billy Baldwin. Just fire him up a bit, will you? Oh. And she went, what? So he said, yeah, just in the after hours. If you could just, if you just get, you know, get into bed with him and fire him up because Far then out. we'll have better chemistry on the set. Oh. So she said, I was being forced or, or, yeah. or suggested to me, you know, a bit of uh-uh, and then it'll help and the movie will be better. Hollywood. And anyway, yeah, that's what she said. Good God. Yeah, just go the camera going. <clears throat> um, no, no, it wasn't with the camera guard. No, no, he said when you get home tonight after work's oh, finished. Oh, just on the side just to... Get mm, the so chemistry that, so that he, Yeah, so that he comes to work happy and yeah. the chemistry's good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so if ever my performance drops here at the end, yeah. <laughs> we'd have to bring in an outsider. Yeah. Oh. We're going to have to get a fluffer in because I'm not taking part I in that. I feel like I haven't been working that well lately. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a bit down. Yeah, we're going to do some team building exercises. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> and finally, this is the story that I knew you'd love. Your favourite actor of all time, Leonardo. Oh, yeah. Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. Loves him. Now, what's his role with dating women? Are uh, they usually, no, pretty much, he's never dated anyone over the age of 25. Okay. Well, his latest little fling, Tayana Taylor, over the hill, 33. <gasps> oh, he's broken his rule. Loves he's it. Good chance. She's an, old, she's an old duck. 33. She's an old chook. Yeah. Yeah, no, Rue thinks that I'm in love with him because I hate him so much. Because yeah. you talk thing. about him all, all the time. The time. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. I, I haven't right. mentioned him. But, uh, you brought him up today, That was actually. our speed dating celebrity gospel for today. <laughs> that's nice right. It's a lot. Triple one. Triple M Breakfast with Rue, Dits and Loz. Best breakfast show in Adelaide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lehman. Lehman! I'm Anthony Lehman. Oh, fresh from his sold-out tour of the Fringe here in South Australia in Adelaide. <laughs> and what about last night, the John Cleese roast? Oh, thank you, team. Wonderful to be with you again. Very strange roasting John Cleese. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I mean... You can't find a bigger legend no. in the world of comedy. No. As a kid, I couldn't have loved John Cleese more. And here I am. Here he is, right, getting smashed by a bunch of Australians who can't get on Celebrity Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's it, true. It didn't quite... <laughs> what? How, how did that come about? He, uh, he was in Australia touring and Shane Jacobson did the Paul Hogan roast. Yep. Uh, a year ago, and then the Channel 7 were really happy with the Paul Hogan roast, and then Shane said, hey, John Cleese is in town, I'm mates with him, why don't we do a John Cleese roast? And then uh, and John Cleese agreed to it, and he was a bloody good sport. Was he? Was he? Bl- oh, mate, we were digging their heels in. Here, have a listen. He, he, he even, he's such a good sport, he even laughed at this. And then I'll put in a bit where I said, uh, I said, thanks for getting me through covid because I, wa- I watched a lot of no, I watched a lot of your movies, which was great because I'd lost my sense of taste. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, while I had COVID, yeah, because yeah, I got COVID and lost my sense of taste. Yeah, yeah. Not, right. Do you want us to do a laugh now? Off the say, yeah, chuck it. Chuck. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, and, uh, what was he like? Uh, I want to know banter wise. Um, did you spend a lot of time with him afterwards beforehand? I'll tell you what, Dits, we recorded this in July last year, right? <laughs> I met him, okay? What? The first time I ever met John Cleese in my whole life was backstage at Crown uh, Palladium in Melbourne, and I was waiting to go on to be introduced, and then he walked around, so he was being introduced after me, and I turned around, and I said, Hi, Mr. Cleese, my name's Lemo, it's a pleasure to meet you. 
and he had his phone out because the ashes were on. He was staring at his phone. He looks me in the eyes and goes, Kawaja, gone. <laughs> so he is an absolute cricket nuffy. Oh. And the whole, when we were filming, every break in filming, he pulled his phone out and was checking a cricket score. And he'd look <laughs> over at me and go, thumbs down. <laughs> We were getting smashed. Oh. So really good bloke. And then afterwards, we were having a drink afterwards, and he was just lovely talking to him about comedy and and life. And he just he loves comedy. And he really was getting into the minutiae of the jokes we were making about him. It oh, nice. that's great. Oh, cool. Well done. He was, uh, it was very cool. And he even had a sense of humour about his private life. Like, for example, when I said this, and the joke there is, uh, I love all your sequels, Shrek 2, Charlie's Angels 2, Pink Panther 2, Spud 2, Spud 3, but I especially love Divorce 2 and Divorce 3. <laughs> <laughs> so he's even happy to laugh at that. Oh, oh really? Oh, very good. <laughs> he's like, uh, nice. yeah. Uh, yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, so a, r- a ripping guy. Animal. Speaking so, of Divorce rip- 2 and 3, how's your wife going? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Loz, you do not. One person you do not mess with in this world is my wife. Right? Okay, what happened? We had graffiti down the side of our house last <gasps> week. Right? Graffiti, these sort of swirls of graffiti the whole way down the red brick side of our house. Kel was spewing, so she rings the council. Can you send someone around to clean the graffiti off our house? And they go, no, nah, that's not a service we offer. And she goes, but you used to do it, so come around and do it. And they go, no, we only clean graffiti off if it's offensive. And she goes, well, it's offensive. <laughs> and they said, and they go, well, take a photo of it and send it to us and we'll decide whether or not it's offensive. So my wife walks outside no. with a can of paint. No. <laughs> can I spell it out for you? Yeah. Yeah. And writes in between the swirls down the side of our house. No, oh, no. She wrote it on the side of their own house. Took a photo, sent it to the council. They sent someone around who cleaned, all, cleaned it all. She's up. a genius. They would have got the job done, yeah. Yeah, that all got her in the trouble herself. I hope the Melbourne <laughs> City Council don't listen to Adelaide Radio. <laughs> and if, so imagine if I'm just driving past at that time. I think, mean, what's yeah. that lady doing? Yeah. Oh, that, is okay. the, that is the point that I made this when she was driving. <laughs> you know what that person who saw him do it said? Yeah, Limo is a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he lives there. Yeah. Self-labelled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lemo, good work, mate. All right, good on you guys. No worries, mate. Well, Lemo joins us every Wednesday morning on Triple H. He played over 200 AFL games. And Jonas kicks the goal, second career goal in his 210 games. He's the former Port Adelaide captain. Oh. Big tackle, Jonas, captain's wrap-up. Please welcome to Triple M Breakfast, Tom Jonas. Oh, Rue, the big burning question for me and Loz is uh, where's he playing this year? I've mm. heard that many rumours, that many clubs he's been tied to. For Over the weekend, another club oh, mentioned no. in the paper. Tom Jonas, where are you playing? And I'll be a dominant local football as well. I'll, I'll take out the best full forward of any Div A amateur side <laughs> going around. Why don't you play full forward instead of full back for a change? Tell well, them where you want to play and I have know, some fun. I know, it's, my, it's time to go down the other end and enjoy it a bit, isn't it? I trained at Rocks the other day for a kick and they broke up into lines. And I went down the forward line. Yeah. And they were doing, and they were doing centre bounce structures. So I said, bug with this and went down the backs and helped them take a few Are you playing for Birdwood and Kangaroo Island? <laughs> I'm probably going to have a kick on KO with my brother. He's yeah. over there. Yeah. that all along. So he's locked in at Wonks. And then, um, no, I haven't heard anything about Birdwood. Birdwood. So maybe I, there was an article um, in the Sunday Mail over the weekend linking you oh to yeah. someone. I, I might. Um, there may be a little one-off sportsman's night up at one car in the Riverlands. Yeah, one so, car. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez, you get around, Tommy. It's big money. You're going it's low if you play for Wonka. Oh. Brown paper bags everywhere. <laughs> I've got two out. kids, and, you know, one day there might be a third, so we've got to think, think yeah. ahead. Now, now that you're not at Port Adelaide anymore, you can give us the real goss, all right? None of <laughs> yes. this half ass stuff that you've yeah. been Diplomatic doing in the past. Crap. One yeah. Yeah. I've been up all night thinking who I was going to throw under the bus right. first. Right. Be, all be. right. No, just... Now, I just want to ask you first up, uh, you are one of our great captains, inspirational leader, the way you played the game. Very You've handed nice. over the baton to Connor Rosie. Have you had any? Have you had a coffee with him or are you, are you just leaving him to it? Have you given him any advice or not? Yeah, I've, I've, I've offered him some advice. He probably doesn't need any just yet. <laughs> but um, no, I've been around a bit and certainly 
reached out. But it's a it's a really good time of year as a, as a skipper. Like I think he's had a lot of support. They've invested heavily in the, the younger leaders, and you know until you start playing games and you maybe feel a little bit of pressure of results or form or whatever it may be, you pr- you can pretty much just um, enjoy yourself and just start ease into the role. So I think he's he's had a great preseason and uh, feeling pretty good about it. Tommy, who's going to play second ruck? Dixon's a bit banged up. He doesn't look like he's capable of doing that. They want to probably preserve him a little bit. Will Finn Layson play this week or will you play two yeah. rucks? Yeah, I reckon you probably spot on there. They probably try not to expose Charlie to too, too much of it unless we need a real um, start-up. But I reckon, I mean, with, with board out, it makes sense that Finn Layson, who played every game last year leading goal, could probably get to go. I, I don't know. Both the ruckmen are looking good. Um, which would take care of that. But I think Finn Lason's shown that he can definitely do plenty of damage in the ruck, so he's more than capable of that role. Uh, we did our bump podcast yesterday, which anyone that likes their AFL, check out the bump on the listener app. But uh, I tried to pick a team uh, for this weekend, Tommy, and I, I'm finding it really hard, especially half forwards, uh, wingmen, and half back flankers. I, 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 there are so many different players to choose from. Yeah, I, reckon, I, I don't know. I've watched a fair bit of him over preseason. Jackson Mead's been the standout. Aside has he? From sort of the you regulars. reckon he'll play? I, I think he has to play. I haven't um, got him in my 23. Yeah, and then, I mean, it's it, down back, they look pretty set with the two new boys alongside Lear Lear, which means someone has to miss out, whether that's a, a Burton or Williams. Jones has been, looks like a mainstay. I and then I haven't got Williams in. Yeah, which he'd, he'd be stiff because he's so... Plenty yeah, he last right. year. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to keep getting better as well. So hopefully we've seen him play lots of footy this year. And then the wings will be a bit of a, a revolving door, I think. It'll be, a, a, you know, who's going well at, at the time. I think Bokey's spent all pre-season getting used to it. So he'll certainly get first goal and knowing what he's like, he'll make it his own. All right. And how's Daddy Daycare going? You yeah, sound it like sounds like a lack of discipline there. there this morning. <laughs> oh, always a lack of discipline. It shows through on the footy shift. You just can't tell. So. Yeah. Father like son. Oh. Now I've got to ring your dad again this morning. Uh, he's coming around the next couple of days to fix two broken windows, but there's a third broken window at my house oh, now. No. You get the third what? one for free. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's like cheap, but I think you've got to sort of do nine coffees before you get right. home. Right. Right. Well, well, your stamps. Six, six kids, right? I don't know how it's taken this long well, to this, start breaking. Windows. This is a stained glass window, oh. though, so maybe that's even expensive one. Uh, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> now yeah, they cost. The other thing I did ask your dad about, I said, are you, you're back on the crows now that Tommy's finished? He said, absolutely. Oh, he get said, out. No, oh, the old man, this no is way. what he said. I said, I'm going to say this on radio. He said, I don't care. He goes, he never wore one piece of port merchandise oh, your dust. whole career. He told me that. Full <laughs> dust. That, that's BS, BS, but I will tell you no, something. No, it's not. Your <laughs> old man's not instead, a liar. Instead, instead, of, instead of paying... Paying cash, he offered to buy him a Crows membership for the. What's that? that that's what he said. Instead of paying him for fixing the windows, he offered him a couple of seats. Yeah, oh, that is oh, not oh, true. Oh, He's the on. biggest Crows man going around, and I said it won't be long before Tommy is either. Oh, so. stop oh, that. Come off it. Is yeah. it true, Tommy, that uh, you might have popped on a Crows hat when you were calling the uh, down at a oh, Richmond? I was pretty close, but just just couldn't quite do it. Oh, just yet. Don't tell oh, lies on Triple M, Tommy. No, hey, uh, no. Now, before you leave us, before you leave us, I've heard a whisper. You weren't too keen on the round zero at the weekend. Oh, I think I didn't mind mind the concept, except the NRL still got to jump on, jump on us. They played over in Vegas, obviously. And the other thing, you know, I love playing at the SCG, but I don't think it's the spectacle we're after. I think you need the MCG or the Adelaide Oval. One of those, one of those grounds was free flowing, open footy, full house. This doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't, wasn't quite have the ring to it. I don't mm. know what you thought. Hopefully, yeah. this week's the best round one we've had. Mm. Yeah, I think, sure. yeah. I think. I mean, I mean, I was just glad that footy was back. There's a couple of very close games of footy. You can't ask for too much more than that. So, look, looking forward to this oh. week's just increase the build up. Well, there he is, Tommy Jonas, former Port Adelaide skipper. We still love him, though. We don't forget, Tommy. You're still, you're still important to us. He gave us more now that he's retired I than know. he ever gave well, us. Yeah. And any clubs out expect. there, if you've got a brown paper bag, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll play the odd game for <laughs> oh, you. No, he's giving back. <laughs> Good on you, Tommy. We'll catch you in the next week or so. Uh, have a great day. See you next week. Here he is, Tommy Jonas. Read it's a lot. Triple M. No better time or place to jump into Jayco than at Jayco Adelaide's brand new West Beach dealership. Triple M Breakfast with Blue Dits and Lies. What a goal! Over-
Overnight Sports. Oh, we are all excited for this week's footy. Crows coach Matty Nix was on the rush hour last night as the Crows get ready to take on the Gold Coast this Saturday night away from home. Let's hear about him taking on, how he thinks about taking on the Gold Coast. Trying to get a gauge on, on how they're going to play because you know, a new coach coming in, an extremely you know, highly regarded coach, what he's going to add. They've got some real talent. We like to think we're going to bring a you know really strong contest this weekend and something we pride ourselves on. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping we see a really, really good game. Rue, I reckon and it's good that you got to see them play last week. So Yeah, because they played better last week than they did in their trial games. Yeah, that's for sure. They yeah. were a bit poor in both their trial games. So, yep. yeah, they stepped it up and Richmond didn't. I think Adelaide will go up there and have a real crack. Yeah, for sure. Now, a lot of talk this week about the Riley Philthorpe injury. Here's Matty Nix talking about the replacements. Burgess, we bought in. Yeah, he's ready to go. Lucky mm-hmm. Gallant has been unlucky not to play. And so, you know, he's another option for us forward at the ball. Himmelberg's another one. So... There are guys that we'll, we'll be able to replace him with, but um, disappointing for him, you know, mm. as an individual. Yeah, going to be a big game Saturday night. They only won two games on the road last year. It'd be a huge start to get up there and have a big win, then come back and play the Cats Friday night footy at Adelaide. All right, watching Seven News last night, I saw Port Adelaide's Ollie Wines uh, talking about his new role and about the midfield at Port Adelaide. Our best is, is capable of going up the top of the ladder again and, and competing with those top sides in um, the Brisbane's, the Collingwood's, the GWS's. Yeah, they should be pretty good, Port Adelaide. they got West Coast Eagles this Sunday. Mm. Ollie Lord's going to go and have an arthroscopy on his uh, leg this week. He actually broke his leg, so mm. he's having an arthroscopy on his knee. So must have done a good job. And they had Greg Chappell down at training yesterday. They did. Dits, just mm. to uh, pick the brain of a yep. superstar cricketer. Yep. Hey, Ro, I want to ask you about the Brownlow medal. It's been announced uh, as of yesterday. Again, the umpires won't have access to stats after the game. This has been this has been talked about a lot over the years. Yeah, I do not like it. I do not agree with it. The umpires should be able to uh, check after a game just to say, oh, yeah, young McEntee did well and go and check at what his stats were. Because as a commentator, you don't know sometimes if he's kicked two goals or four goals. You, you can't remember. It's certainly out on the field. An umpire's not going to remember all that. They're not right. going to remember all the stats. They're not going to, they're not going to, they're too busy. They're running around officiating the game. They should be able to come in and go, I want to check Ditmar's stats today. Yep. I reckon he played well yep. and just use it as a guide. It's only a guide. It's not the most it just stats helps. gets the three votes. See, every former player, me included, would looks at stats as a guide when you're giving best on ground, whether it's on Triple For M sure. or Fox Footy. So why I'd, shouldn't they? I don't agree with it. And I told the uh, AFL uh, exactly that at the, at the Fox Tour launch a couple of weeks ago, and plenty of others did. What, did they? They uh, took say it on anything? board, and they were, they're looking at it. So, um, just quickly, I, on Brownlow night, the umpires are even under more pressure. Like we know they're under a ton of pressure as it is, right, for making decisions. Yep. And then on Brownlow night, everyone goes, "Oh, why'd they give him three votes? What a stupid decision!" Right? So yep. then the umps cop it again, and it might help them. It might relieve that pressure if they could look at stats. Yep. Um, exactly right. So there were 16 times last year in the Brownlow medal that uh, players got three votes, so best on ground, but got no coaches' votes mm. from the coaches. Yep. And there was 19 times that a player got 10 votes from the coaches, so that's best on ground by both coaches, yeah. and didn't get any votes in wow, the Brownlow. So interesting? 35 yeah. games you would think weren't accurate out of, what mm. is there, 220-odd, yeah. 230 games of footy a year. All right, there you go. Uh, no case to answer for Mason Cox, the big Collingwood ruckman, who just did a silly thing. Nah, he ran nothing, through there the, was nothing in the it. warm-up of the GWS. And we know that you know, Richmond have lost a, f- a few players already and uh, the coach has already jumped ship. Looks like the CEO, Brendan Gale, is going to head down to be the Tassie CEO. He sold yeah. his house in Melbourne recently Gee. and the jungle drums are That's beating exciting. that he's going to leave. Well, it's mm. exciting, but... If you're left at Richmond, you're going yeah. to feel like the last people right. hanging around. In the cricket, can our boys finish the year with a win? The Redbacks in a very strong position. Uh, Tasmania, one for eight, need 316 to win. So looking good down there in Tassie. Come on, the Redbacks.